Okay, thank you all, and uh, sorry for that slight delay. But anyway, the, welcome to the uh, Gower AONB Partnership Steering Group meeting in October. And um, first item on our agenda, apologies for absence. I know we had three or four there, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Apologies from councillors Mark Child, Andrew Stevens, and Mark Thomas, and also from Paul. Yeah. Okay. And Anyone Deb else? Hill. Deb Hill. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyway, item two, then we're moving on, is disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. Anyone? No? No? Thank you. Item three is the uh, to approve the minutes of the previous meeting, and you'll find them on um, starting on page one there, and you. That was held on the 5th of July. If no, you've got any comments, Chairman, I'll move those here. Oh, if you would, yeah. Everyone happy? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, then moving on to item four is the uh, Sustainable Development Fund, the SDF, and the reports there. The first one from Mike is for information. And um, then we, there's two others, Mike, that you, you wish to present. Mike's on the phone. Oh, of course, sorry. Yeah. All right. Do you want to come back to that one? Yeah, we'll skip in to the next one. Yeah, you can do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then item five, we'll come back to the other one, is the presentation on the uh, AONB Communities and Nature Project from the Nature Project Officer, Ursula. Um, Chris, did you want to introduce Ursula to us and then she can give a yeah, presentation? Yeah, 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 I will do just briefly. It was um, uh, just to let the, the steering group know that um, Ursula joined us uh, in July on a contract through till um, the end of March at the moment um, to help us with uh, some of the actions that um, we're looking to do, um, particularly around the um, nature recovery. Um, so project work and some strategic work as well and it's um, part of a Welsh Government um, revenue grant we've had for, for this year so I'll, I'll pass it on to Ursula. Thank you. Welcome Hi. Ursula. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. Great. Um, yeah, well as Chris said my name is Ursula Jones and I'm the Communities and Nature Project Officer. I work within the Gower AOMB team and I help deliver a suite of projects. As Chris mentioned, I started the role in mid-July and so far I've been working on a few different things, which I'm going to summarise very briefly for you now. Most recently, a lot of my time has been spent implementing a Japanese knotweed control programme along the River Valley in Park Mill. The area forms part of the Gower Ashwood Special Area of Conservation and Swansea Council are working with Ilston Community Council to implement the programme. I've undertaken the surveys to map the locations and extents of the infestations. I've secured the various permissions from landowners and Natural Resources Wales, and I've appointed a contractor who is starting the work, uh, the herbicide treatment this week. Um, it's the intention to undertake further treatments in 2022 and 2020 to 2023 to significantly limit the extent and spread of Japanese knotweed in the valley. I'm also conducting some footpath improvement works on Kevin Bryn Common to address erosion caused by surface water runoff and foot traffic. The aim is to resurface the steeper sections of the footpath with stone pitching and install some new low level finger posts to indicate the roots of the footpaths and bridleways. The project includes consultation with landowners, commoners, the Community Council, Natural Resources Wales and the Countryside Access Team at Swansea Council. Next project is on Fairwood. So grazing by commoners is critical for the conservation of the habitats and species on Fairwood Common. To support this, I'm coordinating the installation of a new water pipe leading to an existing livestock herding area. This will require consultation with Welsh Water, landowners, commoners, Natural Resources Wales and the contracting team at Swansea Council. I'm still at the very early stages of this project, so it's just getting off the ground at the minute. 
So nothing more to report at the moment, I'm afraid. And then finally, about half of my time in this role is spent developing a management plan for Klein Valley Country Park. I'm still at the stage of gathering information, but to date I have met with Klein Valley Community Project, who are a key stakeholder for the country park and have been exceptionally helpful in providing the history to the park, the guided tours, introducing me to their members. And I'm in the process of meeting with other stakeholders to gain an understanding of their aims, objectives, values and concerns, and to find out who is responsible for what when it comes to the various features of the park and the delivery of the management actions within the park. At the heart of the management plan will be the vision for the park. And the aim is to create a framework which stakeholders can work within to help guide the management actions and to identify who's going to be responsible for what. I've drafted a plan which is being fleshed out as I gather more information and consult with more stakeholders. It's been really great to meet you all and thank you for listening and I'll hand back to the chair now. Um, moved in, sorry. Oh, yeah. thank you very much, Ursula. Got a uh, good few projects on there anyway, haven't you? Um, yeah, <laughs> they've kept me busy. Well. <laughs> yeah, so, no, we wish you well with them and please keep us informed and um, that would be great. Will do, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or points to make for Ursula's presentation? I, w I would like to say something. Oh, yes, please, yeah. I would just like to say thank you so much to Ursula and all the, the other teams that have been helping in Klein Valley. It's been a breath of fresh air to have somebody who's interested and supportive. So thank you to Ursula and the team. Well done. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's right. Hamish. Hamish, put your hand up. Sorry, I was doing the the, the mute thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's it's great to have Ursula uh, um, in the A and B team. Um, a really good um, range of projects there. Um, I know we've had a, had a meeting over the the Klein Valley. I, I'd like to keep the dialogue going, so do do push us on some of those. And um, I hope that the, the team will be able to keep you on beyond the end of that. So you know, it'd be really good if you could. So. Indeed, yeah. I'm keeping everything Chris. crossed, Hamish. <laughs> yes. Chris. Yeah. yeah um, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, thanks, Hamish. Yeah, I think that you know, it's, we have every intention to um, try and keep Ursula on as long as we can. I think as well as just wanted to say as well as the, um, you know, the individual projects that Ursula's really got into her teeth into, um, we're, we're now also looking at um, what the AOMB does in terms of nature recovery and um, you know, at a more strategic level what the priorities should be. Um, obviously that's, that's something that will be very um, close to your own art, Hamish, but um, you know, that, that, that's something we'll, we hope to pick up um, in, in the next month or so, I think, to start having conversations about that. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thank you. Paxton? <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. First of all, I better apologise to Chris now for what I'm going to say, but um, sometime back now, about six months or so ago, I think we met with uh, all the councillors who were uh, <coughs> impacting on that area, basically, whether it's from Dunvant, to uh, Calais, etc., um, and Sketty, and we did set, say we were going to set up a group to put things together there in terms of making sure that we get a group of seriously looking at this area and supporting what's going on there um, uh, in respect of what we said that uh, we need to be doing similar to the um, AOMB programmes. Um, and I spoke to Chris about it <coughs> uh, since then and I think we agree, Chris, that it was probably best done through officers rather than a councillor. I think that's what we agreed, and I was just wondering where we were with that at the moment. That's why I'm apologising to Chris because I've landed this on him without actually talking to him about it first of all. Thank you, Chair. All right, thanks, Paxton. Chris, your hand is still up. Do you come back, or is that an old hand? It, it, no, I, I did put it up again. Thanks in, in response okay. to Cheers. Paxton. No, it's not a problem, Paxton. Um, at, yeah, we have with with the management plan. We have been we have been talking <clears> about. Um, 
the, the sort of stakeholder engagement side of it and obviously the um you know the councillors in terms of local ward members as well as relevant cabinet members are very important to that so um um we want to start having those discussions sooner rather than later and um you know particularly with the, the management plan i think the important thing is um as ursula mentioned is about it's about the um the vision for the site and the long-term <coughs> objectives because if, if we don't get those right um the the management plan won't won't do what we're um looking for it to do so um we're hoping to engage with um all the the relevant um local ward members in the very near future okay yeah thank you thank chris and i'm sorry as i say i dropped that on you <laughs> <Water in you. laughs> not to worry thank you thank you all um Mike, in a position to report now? Yes, thank you, yeah. Chairman. I can right. see that I... Sorry, go on. Sorry, wait. So we were looking at the SDF fund, Sustainable Development mm -hmm. Fund. Um, there are three parts to this. First is that the fund is now fully committed for this year. And you'll see there are some notes on, in the papers showing the, the amounts, the number of grants and things that we've dealt with. Um, secondly, is at the request of Welsh Government, we've looked again at how we appoint members to the, um, the SDF panels. And they're keen that we try and get as diverse a democratic uh, demographic for the group as we possibly can, and to also try and turn over the membership so we get some new blood in there as well. So looking at how we do it at the moment, we currently every two years have um, an election to the AOMB steering group. And from that, we then appoint uh, non-councillor members to the, the SDF panels. What I'm suggesting is that every year we appoint two new members to the to each of the two panels, and that each and that those people are then appointed for two years. At the end of which they then stand down, and we appoint a further two members. The idea is that we then get a, a rolling membership, and hopefully that will enable us to, to bring some new blood in and um, we'll turn over the uh, membership as Welsh Government had um, been looking for. Now there are some notes in the papers for the meeting. Um, I welcome any comments and suggestions. Um, if I can get any um, advice from you sounds that would be very welcome i can then make sure those are rewritten in and we can then go and get approval to get those changed if it works in the way that i'm hoping we won't need to change the terms of reference for the steering group we can just through it do it through the, the processes that we use uh, which will make it easier um does anyone have any comments on that now, or shall I shall, leave it? Shall we see do that first then, um, Mike, if that's all right. Is there any comments or suggestions <coughs> to Mike's report? Um, looks a sensible. Looks sensible. Oh, sit, um, <laughs> somebody's not my car. Somebody's, somebody's not my car. Okay. Uh, just, I'll... Just bit, like, um, I'm just saying it looks quite sensible, isn't it, to do it this way? Um, and then we've got a rolling uh, program of. of uh, Membership, sorry, of the SDF. I can't see any other hands up. So that 
And so I'm assuming that we go forward with that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Chairman. Yeah. There you are. All right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you very much. The third point was we were looking to introduce a landscape and biodiversity grant scheme. Um, this was to be part of the overall SDF grant fund. So we will use some of the funding from that. And we were looking to support a range of landscape and biodiversity enhancement initiatives. Um, it'll be aimed at landowners, community councils and community groups spaces where we can get biodiversity gains through relatively small projects. So the sorts of projects we were looking at were dry stone walling, hedge laying and planting, small woodland creation, coppicing, fencing of riparian habitats, orchard creation and restoration, natural flood management schemes, pond creation, wildflower, wildflower meadow restoration, community wildflower corridor creation. And those are the main ones. Um, Why Valley A O M B run a similar scheme? Now, they had included small historical features as one of the, the activities. They haven't actually had any applications for that, so I'm wondering whether that's a valid activity that we want to try and fund through this. The intention would be that it would be limited to 50% funding for up to £3,000. So these are relatively small schemes. They're maximum of £6,000 funding, I suppose. I will, with your approval, I will draw up some more notes and a simple application form to, to go with this. Uh, if I can get all that done, I will send those round to you before the next um, steering group meeting so you have a chance to, to look at them and make any considerations. But at this stage, Again, I'd welcome any comments and suggestions from yourselves. If there is um, any activities that you think we should also include, which aren't on there, um, that would be really useful. Indeed. OK, thank you, Michael. I've got one hand up straight away. Linda. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Mike, I do think you ought to include small architectural features because there's lots of pounds across Gower, there's small wells, there's quite a few old um, small buildings and various features that I think it should be included. Okay. Hmm. Well, indeed. Sorry, uh, Amy, she made a comment. Thank you for that. Chris? Yes. Um, that sounds fine. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Um, I was just going to add, um, yeah, the the context for this is, you know, really what we were just saying um, with Ursula's presentation about you know, some of the commitments we've made to nature recovery um, across the A O N B. We thought it'd be a really good idea to have, you know, that, that a proportion of the S D F sort of ring fenced effectively, isn't it, Mike? Um, for, for this kind of um, uh, for, for this kind of project, um, so I think you know one of the other discussions we need to have is about well, what um, what proportion of, of the SDF budget every year might be appropriate for um, uh, for this kind of project going forward. Um, right, yeah, we have we haven't really had much of a discussion about what. Um, you know what sort of proportion ourselves might be, but we just thought that yeah, that's that's something for else something else for you to to consider on as, as well as the actual principle of um, um, you know, ring fencing 
um, is is what sort of proportion you might want to think appropriate. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, good suggestion. John, John France. Just wanted to support Linda. There's a spring house, for example, on the lower slopes of Kevin Bryn, which is massively overgrown and could do with a bit of trouble and care. Uh, so I think these very small buildings are often ignored and spring houses are actually very rare indeed. So I hope we would put some effort into that as well. Yes, good point, John. And then once, I mean, this, if people will um, approve this uh, in this meeting, then we can go ahead and get those, gather those uh, suggestions and ideas that are, are already coming forward. And uh, let's hope they're valid then. We can get them validated and something done. So are we happy to um, go along with my suggestion? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for those comments I can see coming up. OK, thank you, Mike, and um, look forward thank to that you. now. And I see Gordon's with us now. Gordon, uh, item six is yours straight away if you'd like to um, introduce it. We have got it here on page 10. Tourism pressures. Also got the camera off. Yeah. yeah. You're in with us now, Gordon. You're up, you're there. Right, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Gordon. Can you hear us, Gordon? He's, he's on mute. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's muted. Oh, he did come up. Yeah, we, he did. Here we are, Gordon. Am I, am I in now? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Sorry. Thank, sorry about that. I had to get a, an employee of the council to come and help me. Thank you. <laughs> Very well. When you're ready, please. You got your your um, item is on your agenda. Is we we've reached that. Thank you. Well, do you want me to do something on that? Do you, well, do, do you want to add anything to it, or, or do I? I haven't it heard anything. Well, you've got the you've got the article. Yep. It was prompted really by what Mike Scott produced at the last meeting, and from an opinion of what the Gower Society has on the current situation. It mm -hmm. is there for thought and discussion. We're not trying right. to tell people what to do. We're just saying this is the problems as we see it. And we were agreeing with your um, own officer um, that there was a situation. And mm. I leave it. I, I'm open to any 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 questions on what we've written. OK, thank you. Vax. We've got some work into this. Any members wish to uh, comment or make a suggestion, etc.? No hand, no hand up. Could, no? Am I? Oh, Chris, sorry, Chris has his hand up now. Well, no, no, I was, I was just hoping um, we'd, we'd hear from some of the members on, on yeah. this. But you know, I, I just did want to say, um, you know, a lot of the issues um, that Gordon's race specific to, um, uh, to Gower and, and you know the. Um, are reflected in in what has been happening elsewhere um, throughout Wales, particularly um, you know the the other national parks. They've, they've seen a massive Indeed. increase of, yeah. of visitors, and it's um, uh, it's uh, you know, a lot of the um, uh, people who who have been visiting um, are um, um, a, a very different sort of. Um, uh, it's been a very sort of different attitude from them, I think, and in terms of um, you know, how how people um, behave in the countryside and um, understand how it works. There's some there's some really big messages we've got to um, get out there in terms of you know, 
people are welcome to enjoy um, the countryside, but they, you know, they, they need to understand um, you know, what their, their activities there um, impact on, on, on the very things that they're, they're coming to see. Yeah, no, true. Yeah. Thank yes. you. John? Yes, I, I, I mean, I don't disagree with anything in the paper. I, I just would say that um, this has been a very exceptional year. Um, and I would guess that the great flow of people will ebb because Ibiza and um, similar places are, and Magaluf are open um, from this year onwards. And unless there are further restrictions, um, I would guess that next summer we'll see a slightly different situation. I do agree that the people who've been coming are different and they are much younger and i think the idea suggested at the end of this that perhaps we should use social media somewhat to say <laughs> perhaps with other aonbs you know this is how you behave and this is how you not behave <laughs> might be quite a good idea um but my guess is or my feeling is at least that the scale of the problem is going to go down next year and that might give us a better perspective. But um, there are many dangers, and the Gordon's paper outlines them very nicely. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, you are you are right. I mean, town centres, countryside, beauty spots, etc., have all been absolutely full this summer. I've noticed it myself, and uh, and I've seen some things that other well, disgusted me, where people were attacking wildlife and so on. But certainly not on, although to be fair, people where I was, you know, they reprimanded those people. Thank you. Chris, your hand back up. Yeah, um, sorry. Um, I was just going to add, I think as, as well as um, these sorts of issues affecting um, other landscapes, um, we, we do have a lot to learn from how some of the other landscapes have, have engaged with, with this as an issue. So. Um, you know, certainly uh, Brecon Beacons um, and um, Snowdonia National Park, they've been, they've been able to engage um, uh, volunteers, but also um, officers to, to help in the, um, in visitor management, but particularly to engage with those visitors as well and you know, t talk to them about the landscapes and, and why they're important and, um, you know, can can help them get the best out of their visit. Thanks. True. Thank you. Pakistan. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Well, obviously, what um, <coughs> Gordon is talking about here is a major problem, not just here, but everywhere. So really, I was asking, I'm going to ask a question. Do you see a role for this body, particularly in this, or the Gower, the Gower management team within this? Or are we looking to act more as a pressure group in terms of trying to get um, either West government or national governments to work to, to work to resolve this problem as best they can, because it's such a wide ranging one. It's not just affecting Goa. How do we do it on a local basis? What role do we have on a local basis to do it? I think is probably the question I'm asking. Mm, yeah, that's true. From what I saw, Pakistan, I mean, you know, it's all my travels across Wales. Mm. And, uh, pretty similar behaviour. And as I said, over, uh, uh, yeah, uh, crowded town centres and countryside. So it's, it isn't just Gower. Gordon makes a point now, I think, about the use of social media. Plus, as you say, does Welsh and UK government have a role to play here? Yeah. Any other yeah. comments? Oh, sorry. Could I Gordon? come in there, Chair? Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yes, please. Uh, let Barbara. Let Barbara. Right, OK. Barbara. Sorry, I was just going to agree with everything everyone said, really. In all these situations where there's an, an air of conflict, it's always about education and communication mm. and mitigation of problems. That's all I wanted to say, really. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, and Hamish puts a comment there in the chat box as well. Yeah, fair comment. Um, Gordon. Just a quick, I, I don't want to labour the points here. Um, I, I think I agree with you, all of you, and we've got to be very careful. Everyone has a right to come into the countryside. 
And as it stands, everybody has a right to do what they want to do within the 28 days or the 56 days as it's been this year. It, it's yeah. no good as whinging about that because that is the, currently the situation. However, Chris mentioned about um, money and, well, you didn't mention money, you implied money there, Chris. The national parks have been injected with a certain amount of more money than the AMB has to actually cater for this increased sums of money. I gather the AMB hasn't had any. The other thing is that I'd like to know from you, Chairman, and by your assembled colleagues, how many people work for tourism within Swansea Bay? Because I looked yesterday, I had a cause to look at the latest newsletter. It's an incredibly good newsletter for the city and county of Swansea. They're promoting things within the city, outside the city, and outside its own area. It's very, very good. But how many people are there dragging in more people? How many people are working in your own AOMB team? I'm looking at a new recruit in your department, which wasn't well publicised, I might say. Ursula, I... I news to us so you've now got three people in your AONB team uh, chairman yeah. i leave it at that yeah okay no, no, no fair comment and i hope that uh, comments will be taken on board now because you have made some very valid points here gordon thank you that's, that's good right. all right thank you and then um Item seven is yours, Chris, isn't it? The National Designated Landscapes. See it on page 14. Um, thank you, Paul. So um, I think many of you will be aware that there is um, uh, a partnership, the National Designated Landscapes Partnership, um, that we've, we've um, kind of adopted a, a trading name as a Landscapes Wales um, to make it easier and, sh and shorter to use. Um, but um, this is a, a partnership of the, um, the eight designated landscapes in Wales, um, Natural Resources Wales and Welsh Government. And um, we're trying to take forward the agendas and um, priorities that were identified through the, the various um, reviews of designated landscapes that um, um, were, were on game for quite some time and kind of finished in 2018 um, with a statement from Welsh Government about um, what they felt the priorities were. Um, so um, the partnership's been um, up and running formally now for um, just under a year or so. Um, and um, part of the role of that um, partnership is to um, uh, manage um, the Sustainable Landscape, Sustainable Places Fund. So this is the capital um, budget um, grant that um, we've received from Welsh Government. Um, you um, have reported on the, the projects that we've, um, we've put forward in this year um, already, um, but the, the seminar now is um, trying to, uh, to raise people's awareness of the partnership, what the priorities are, um, and this is an opportunity to look at um, all of the, the projects across the designated landscape in Wales. Um, uh, so I'd, I'd really encourage members to, um, to attend the, the seminar and um, participate in that. Indeed, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Well, you can see the link is on the bottom of the page there, and I'm please, please do sign up. Has anyone got a comment there or want to add anything? I would just say, Chairman, I think that Gordon would be very pleased to see that we've got sustainable tourism. Um, yes, that could be a chance to raise. Yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah thank you, Paxton. Yeah. See you there. Right, thank you. And then um, the final item, item eight, you know, is uh, something that's been hot on the agenda in this part of the world, but it's UK government consultation about strengthening enforcement. 
of the dangerous use of recreational and personal watercraft. Did you want to add anything to your uh, report, Chris? Um, uh, only just to say that obviously, you know, this it's a UK government um, mm. consultation on changes to legislation. So, um, you know, as far as I understand it, it does apply to to Wales. Um, I have spoken with um, other officers um, um, this morning about this and about um, the, uh, the, the council's um, views on this at sort of officer level. Um, I think the intention is that um, Swansea Council will be making representations um, uh, to the consultation. I think generally, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sure everybody, uh, everybody's aware of, of incidents, um, uh, jet skis um, and other personal watercraft on Gower. Um, so the, I think the, the, the general, um, uh, the, the general message is that I think that the consultation is welcomed, um, but the, the issue still remains about um, how how that could be enforced and, and who would do that enforcement. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, that's a fair point to make perhaps in the consultation. What powers have we got and um, who, who would be policing it? Amish, your hand is up there. Thank you, Amish. Yeah, I, I think I, I, most people, apart from maybe jet ski users, think the jet skis are something of a problem in certain areas in Gower. Um, I'm speaking more as someone who lives in Oxwich rather than in my official capacity as a um, NRW uh, rep here. But jet skis can be used quite safely, but still be enormously disruptive to people who are um, hoping to enjoy the A and B and also to wildlife. So I think it goes well beyond issues of danger and enters in into areas of nuisance and and whether um uh, one single person jet ski can disrupt the environment for literally hundreds of other users um i think it's disproportionate i don't know how that could be solved unless we ended up having some i don't know joint code of practice maybe trying to reduce their numbers um i know it's a free country but they really are a problem i think yeah. Yeah. Um, comment. Any other? Chairman. Anyone want to make a contribution? Yes, please, Chairman. Yes, please. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I support what Hamish had just said, and he knows more than any of us who assembled today um, about these things because he uses the water in a canoe and a kayak far more than any of us have ever done. Um, mm. I'd just like to point out there is one example of how the water can be used safely, and that's the, the rib boat that uh, operates out of Oxwich Bay. Um, I don't know if any of you have been on it, but uh, I have, and a group of us went from the society. And I, I was incredibly pleased to ha see how Dave Tong um, is, is conscientious of the wildlife and, and of his position out there. I mean, it's an incredibly powerful boat but he, he handles it with great respect for other people. So uh, I urge anybody who wants um, uh, really a, an educative trip uh, for looking at the Gower Coast, but seeing how it, it should be actually carried out as well. Yeah, yeah. Examples like that we need, Gordon, don't we? And um, so we can put forward perhaps to contribute some towards like a code of practice or something or guidance, legislation. I but I would hope could be introduced. Anyone else like to make a comment there now? No? Yes. Oh, sorry, John, you back? Yes, Jeb, I, I windsurf. I used to windsurf, I don't know, out of Oxwich. And the, the problem is partly safety, but partly just sheer noise. Mm. That's the thing that um, affects so many people. You, you know, it's very nice to sit on the beach or to drift in a, uh, a boat of some sort. And then you have this enormous noise volume. <laughs> um, 
and um, you know it does affect a lot of people i i was walking along the gower cliffs recently and there were 25 of these machines exercising just offshore it was you know it rather broke up the afternoon's peace um I would have thought those machines could be made quieter, and nobody seems to have pressed them, the manufacturers on the point, because they are very noisy at the moment. And I suspect in some cases, any noise suppressing has been removed because they're not equally noisy. So perhaps we could point this out uh, if we get any chance to make a response on this consultation. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you, John. Well, you can see that the link is on the page there that we uh, anyone can um, yeah. make their comments. And I would hope that some of the comments, well, all the comments received today from everyone, you know, that you will take advantage and click on that link and make your comments. Thank you. Um, no other hand up? No? Well, that concludes our uh, agenda today. And thank you all very much. For your contributions. Could I, could I put in, Jim? Yeah, yes, please. Would you, would, would you permit, please? Because it, time, it's a relatively short meeting for me, but for you as well. Would you permit just a, a return to that one item that uh, covers both Chris's, Mike's previous, and our own um, um, matter of, of, of the tourism issue? Would you permit yes. that, please? Yeah, carry on, yeah, yeah. I return back to it, and I really feel that we've left it in limbo. We, as this AOMB steering group, are really supposed to be the, the committee that has more clout on events which govern the AOMB. And I feel that we've just left it a little bit in limbo. Uh, I, I feel it's worth of, of further discussion. I, I, I'm not going to go on because I, I know how boring it is for people who are thinking, what's he going on about? But I've got to emphasise that people are making an extraordinary amount of money this year. I'm not going to mention individuals. I, it would be unfair, but an awful lot of money out of the Gower brand. The Gower brand has gone viral and it is coining in money because more and more people are coming on to Gower. That's a fact. We mentioned in our report the caravan survey, the last caravan and camping survey. I, I hope you picked up on that, that it was last done in 2009, and yet it's an annual requirement. The third thing is the traffic census. We all talk about traffic. I had a thousand cars per hour going past my my door here as I'm looking out at the road, going to and from Rosilli. At its peak, they were getting on for 500 vehicles going out, but 500 cars coming back. And looking at the people who are here today, I know a lot of you in other places on Gower have experienced exactly the same quantity. Now, when was the last traffic consensus census carried out. I, I'm going to remind you that it was in the 1970s by the old West Glamorgan, I think it was the West Glamorgan County Council. Yeah. So it's a long time ago, a long time. And then we've got this, um, the working, we, 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 we really do our, owe ourselves, I think, of forming some sort of interim working group because we're going to be through if we wait for our next meeting it's going to be another three months and we ought to be really discussing it with the this professional staff there's, there's three of them here now in this meeting and anyone else the people who are doing the publicity for the for the city and county they're doing a hell of a good job that website i or the, the, what i saw i thought well my goodness they're promoting all sorts of things into swansea that's been lacking for a long long time and that is going to take pressure from Gower. There's no question about that. And one final plea, and I will shut up then. I look at that Swansea Bay from Mumbles to the entrance to the docks. Every week, I take my dog around the marina. I take her along the frontage there. What an underused piece of coastline in Gower. 
it is frighteningly underused. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gordon. Yep, yeah. a couple of fair points there. Anyone else want to add? Mm -hmm. No? Um, well, shouldn't we be picking up on Gordon's points, and especially the one of having an interim meeting and perhaps talking more with officers at just highways to get um, a census done? Yeah, well, we can do, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Linda. Chris? Yeah, uh, I think that might be a good idea. Um, but also, I'm just um, mindful. I was told um, last week that um, I think um, the tourism team are undertaking um, visitor survey next year to um, yeah, to establish um, you know what what visitors come in, who's coming, but also you know what um, you know. The reasons why they're coming, but I'm I'm just wondering if there's going to be if there'd be an opportunity there to get a better understanding of, of how they're coming to Gower, how they um, and how they're travelling around. Yeah. Okay. Well. Right. That's good. Amish. Yeah. Um. So taking Gordon's um question forward, really is there's there's quite a lot in there that probably needs unpacking and, and would be need discussing and turning into something more in terms of what the actions might be and what we might need to be doing. So I would be happy if if time allows to join a, a separate meeting working group to discuss this. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to do it around a table, to be honest, not on, on, not on the machine, but um, if that were possible but I, I do I think there's a lot in there it's not necessarily all NRW remit but it's something that, that I'm personally interested in and I think we probably would need to unpack it and work out what the issues are and what could be done about it um, things are changing fast aren't they there are, lot, there are lots of reasons why these things have happened some of it's to do with the pandemic something some it's to do with other things so I think there's a, there's a lot to discuss there um, and I'd be happy to to be involved Lay well then. Good. Thank you, Hamish. And uh, there you are, folks. I mean, there's a suggestion there that a small working groups, uh, as Hamish says, unpacks this and then, and then tries to move it forward. Does everyone know in favour of that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yes. Right. That, that'll make progress then. Great. Could we well, could we have a date for that and who would organise it, Chairman? Well, first off, how many are we? <coughs> hey, Miss Gordon, I take it you'd be on this. Oh, yes. without question. Not yes. necessarily me, <laughs> yeah. but right. one of my colleagues. Just a good hint, that's all. So there's two. Any others? Me? Me? Yeah. Linda? I, I'm Barbara. interested. Barbara, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was a good start. And there's somebody <laughs> from tourism, I would suggest, and traffic, transport. To bring in highways, yeah. Yes. Well, highways. Yeah. Put your hand up. Is that backup or? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just to say. Yeah. We'll. We'll obviously the the A M B team will help to facilitate that and right. get things. There you are. Thank you. All right. Thank you very that's much. Good. Thank you, Linda, for suggesting oh, that. Thank you, folks. Hey, Mr. Hand is still up. Do you want to come back or? No, it's um just a residual hand. I'll remove it. There you are. Thank you. All right. Very well, well done. So, right, okay, that concludes our business. And the meeting, next meeting, we meet is on the 6th of December. So, look forward to that. Thank you all. Uh, can I just ask? Yes. Are, are we likely to ever meet again in a room? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know I where mean, that it, it, Is it an assumption that the next meeting will be on Zoom or? Are we going to be brave and mask up and have the windows open somewhere or not? I, well, I absolutely don't know. I know that uh, there will be trialling of what they call hybrid meetings, but I don't know whether that will be in place for December. I can't mm. say. Okay. I, I don't know. Does Jeremy know anything about this from a democratic services point of view, Jeremy? 
There will There's be trade. paper coming to the next Democratic Services um, Committee meeting, but um, it's obviously it's not been decided yet. Yeah. yeah. Who decides these things then? Full council. Council the necessary advice. Can we? Could, is, can we meet outside for a, a, a field visit somewhere for the, or a walk or something to look at something that is relevant to us at some point? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. That's feasible. Climb yeah. Valley even or, or oh, yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, we can go to the railway. We can go to the railway for a pint after. Okay, we'll get somebody to walk. It's one of the good old things. Climb Valley is, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Okay.